On this edition of the Left Bench TV, the Terps are bringing home a national championship. A sit down with one of the most interesting players on the Maryland football team this past year. A familiar face and a new direction for the Maryland football program. An inside look at the Terps doing battle in Baltimore. The Left Bench TV starts now. Another College Cup trophy is coming home to College Park. Welcome to this semester's final episode of The Left Bench TV. I'm Zach Sola. And I'm Danielle Stein. Well, it's time to queue up Queens. We are the champions because the Maryland men's soccer team capped off a historic season with a national title after defeating Akron one to nothing on Sunday night in the College Cup final. The title is the fourth in Maryland soccer history and their third under head coach Sasha Sarovsky. After starting the season 0-2-2 and not being ranked until the start of this tournament, the Terps battled through and shut out all five of their tournament opponents, a huge victory for College Park. And James Mahoney shares their journey to the Cup. Here at Ludwig Field, the home of the now 2018 national champion Maryland Terrapins, Maryland had to go out west to take care of business, but they're coming home with a trophy. The Terps coming in fresh off a semifinals win against Big Ten foe Indiana. As you see Amar Sadich walk by there, remember that name. Maryland making it to the national championship game against the Akron Zips, who scored 15 goals on their path to the finals as an unranked team. The match remained scoreless after the first half despite both teams having chances on net, but in the 57th minute, Johannes Bergman is fouled in the box by the Zips, and senior Amar Sadich would step up to the penalty spot. Quick little run-up by Sadich who buries it. Remember, he was the one who ended the Terps' 476-minute scoreless drought at the start of the season, and there the captain is again making a difference in his final collegiate match. That would be all the offense the Terps needed as their defense again was so strong. And let the countdown begin, Terps fans. Absolute elation from the Maryland faithful from coast to coast and a journey complete for Sasha Sarovsky's squad, winning their first title in 10 years and the fourth in Maryland history. And the Terps finish up the NCAA tournament without conceding a single goal, outscoring their opponents 8 to nothing over the course of five games. A truly worthy champion. Now back to you guys in the studio. And Amar Sadich was named the College Cup's most outstanding player, sealing the deal with his game-winning PK. The new Maryland head coaching job for the Maryland football team is a lock. After a season clouded by off-season chaos, there is new hope after announcing the hiring of Mike Loxley, who has roots in the DMV and a football resume to back him up. Three separate stints right here in Maryland as offensive coordinator and even as an interim head coach following Randy Edsel's firing, a head coaching job with New Mexico, and most recently an offensive coordinator at Alabama, he's bringing over 20 years of experience connections and expertise and former current and even some future potential players are taking to Twitter and noticing sharing their excitement. Jack Schemmel was at Loxie's introduction last week. Thanks guys here at Cole Field House where Mike Loxley was just introduced as the head coach of Maryland and the mood was a little lighter than it's been lately here. After months and months of uncertainty the Maryland football program has a new leader in Mike Loxley. This is a dream come true for me, to be the leader of the Maryland Terrapin football family. Despite a 2-26 head coaching record at New Mexico, Loxley has recently learned under the tutelage of Nick Saban. I just spent three years of my 28 years in this business coaching under a guy that I feel is the greatest coach in the history of college football, if not football alone. And I can only hope that I can take just a little bit of what I've learned from Coach Saban the past three years to implement and install here at the University of Maryland. With all that has gone on with the program this year, Loxley has one thing on his mind. I want to create the right culture and environment and winning will follow. We have one of the best areas in the country for talent and we're going to work 
our tails off to keep it right here. Marty McNair, the father of Jordan McNair, was at the introductory press conference. Marty and myself and Tanya and Kia, you know, we have a common bond, man, that when you lose a child, the circle of life isn't built for parents to bury kids. Our relationship has continued to grow, and for him to be here today just means the world to me and my family. Coach Loxley will be doing double duty in the next couple weeks, staying on as offensive coordinator at Alabama throughout the college football playoff. For the Left Bench TV, I'm Jack Schell. The Terps men's basketball team was ranked in the top 25 last week. And after a crushing 62-60 loss to Purdue and Indiana last Thursday, they came back to the Old Line State for a matchup against one of last year's Final Four teams. It was the Ramblers of Loyola Chicago meeting the Terps at Royal Farms Arena in Baltimore for this one. And it was back and forth throughout the entire first tap. Here's Aaron Wiggins on the corner hitting a three to give the Terps a lead. Continuing their role now, Bruno Fernando, the sophomore big man, check out this spin move, puts it up and in. Another two points for the Terps, and then he goes back on defense and puts in this awesome block. Terps continue to dominate, and here's Eric Ayala through the legs. No look to Daryl Morcel, who puts it down, and he is all smiles after that one. Ayala again feeding this one to Anthony Cowan, who sinks it in. Cowan actually scored his 1,000th point as a Terp. Defense shines in this one, though. Maryland wins 55. To 41. One of the main reasons for the team's success this year has been their depth on the court, and our Joe Alardi has a closer look at the Maryland basketball arsenal. Even though the Terps had some early problems, Coach Turgeon was happy with his team's depth. We had some things happen tonight. Bruno and Sticks got in early foul trouble. Bruno had a silly foul. You know, then Daryl twisted his ankle in uh, warm-ups, and so he tried to go, and he couldn't go. So we had a lot going on forced me to play depth, and our depth was really good tonight. So proud of the young guys and just proud of my team. A solid performance from senior forward Even Bender gave the team a boost after Fernando and Smith both racked up early fouls. Even really got us going offensively, helped us space the floor. Even's kind of like a guard. And a freshman duo, Sarrell Smith Jr. and Ricky Lindo rose to the occasion as well. Uh, Sorrell probably had his first or second best game of the year. Um, he got to play a lot, and I thought Ricky Lindo defensively was terrific. Ten different players saw minutes, including five freshmen. Eight players scored for the Terps. And this will give Maryland more options as they move forward. For the Left Bench TV, I'm Joe Alardi. The Terps slipping out of the top 25, but they will look to utilize that depth of the bench moving forward. The team will take on state rival Loyola, Maryland, Tuesday night at the Xfinity Center. And Saturday night was a busy day for both basketball programs. The top 10 ranked Maryland women's hoops team took on James Madison at the Xfinity Center. Opening it up, here's freshman Taylor Mike Sell starting the scoring with this three and adding a few more along the way. She has been a focal point of this stacked Terps team. Here's another one of her threes. All 10 players on this Maryland roster saw some court time on Saturday, including Kyla Charles and Brianna Frazier, who each led with 24 points. The Terps jumped from 7 to 6 in this week's AP Top 25, likely due in part to this 87 to 63 routing of the JMU Dukes. And they already have a win this week, taking down state rival Roy Loyola, Maryland, on Monday. And the Terps took part in a tradition that's almost too sweet to bear. Thanks, guys. Fans didn't just come to College Park on Saturday to witness the Maryland women's basketball team defeat JMU. They came for a different reason, to show off their arms and give a gift this holiday season. Terps defeating JMU on Saturday wasn't the only thing that had fans of all ages in College Park on their feet. Fans came to the game prepared with their furry friends in hand for the competitive competition. At halftime, fans showed off their arms in hopes of winning a prize. Some came so close and others hit the jackpot. All of the stuffed animals will be donated to College Park Youth and Family Services. What a nice way to get into the holiday spirit. 
The Teddy Bear Toss is a popular event that takes place all across the country, and just recently a Washington Capitals affiliate team, the Hershey Bears, took place in the event and broke a record with 34,798 stuffed animals that were thrown on the ice. It's nice to see fans coming together, forgetting about what side they root for to help kids in need. Back to you at the desk. For a team who had high preseason expectations, well, they faced two tough challenges over the weekend. After wrestling loss to Navy on Friday, Maryland fell to Central Michigan on Sunday, 26-9. But there were some bright spots. Freshman Orion Anderson picked up his first win as a Terp. Then, redshirt junior Jahi Jones picked up an overtime win with this takedown to put points on the board. And the wrestling squad couldn't get it done in the Xfinity Pavilion, but there is one team who's excited to compete out there soon. The Maryland Gymnastics Squad held their annual Red-Black Inter-Squad meet last Thursday. To signify the start of the season, head coach Brett Nelligan and the Gym Terps will compete in their first meet against Westchester, Penn, and SUNY Cortland on January 13th at the Xfinity Center. And while the off season is a fall season is officially over after the men's soccer season came to an end just yesterday, we will take a minute to catch up on some high honors. Senior Linnea Gonzalez closing out her time in College Park with a huge personal win, named National Player of the Year from the National Field Hockey Coaches Association. Big congrats to her. Gonzalez, along with teammates Bodiel Coase and Nico Lorenz, were named to the first team of the NFHCA All Mid Atlantic Region, and Brooke DeBerdine, BB Donrat, and Madison McGuire were named to the second team. For the first time, the Terps are headed to Friday Night Lights. The program just announced that Maryland will face Big Ten foe Penn State under the lights of Capital One Field on September 27th of the upcoming season. This will be new head coach Mike Loxley's first Big Ten matchup of his tenure with the Terps. And while Danielle, the football team continues to rest during their offseason, plenty of Terps put the pedal to the metal this week and had some really big performances. That's true, so let's take a look at some of the best in the top five plays of the week. Here's Taylor Mike Sell at the Xfinity Center hitting this three to give the Terps a lead against JMU. An excellent day for her. Number four, Bruno with the block. Check that one out. Number three, onto the wrestling mat. There's Jahi Jones. That overtime win again. A two-point takedown secures the win for him, although the Terps would fall to Central Michigan. And number two, check this out. Eric Ayal, no look between the legs and gets it for the basket. And our number one play onto the pitch at Santa Barbara. Amar Sadich, the penalty kick, the score, the lone goal in the Terps National Championship win over Akron. He is pumped up. So is the team. They bring the College Cup home to College Park. And we will stay on the soccer field for our Terp of the Week. And it's Terps goalie Dane St. Clair. The redshirt junior from Canada had an excellent NCAA tournament, shutting out the opponents in all five games. An excellent performance by Dane St. Clair and the rest of the Maryland team throughout the NCAA tournament. Remember, a tournament that at the beginning of the season they weren't even sure they were going to be in. Next, the Terp and the Pros is someone near and dear to Maryland, Jake Lehman. His third season with the Portland Trailblazers, and he's making his presence known lately. Lehman didn't see minutes for five straight games, but Friday's game against the Phoenix Suns was a different story. Coming off the bench, Lehman had a career day scoring 24, 24 points. How about that? In Lehman's efforts, help Portland secure the win and snap their three-game losing streak. And the Terp that we've loved watching for the past few seasons over at Capital One Field, Australian punter Wade Lees. He talked to our Noah Gross at the football field earlier about punting and a little bit of everything else. Welcome to another segment of Between Two Terps. Noah Gross here alongside Maryland punter Wade Lees. Wade, thank you for joining us today. Hi, buddy. Thanks for having me. All right, Wade, let's talk about the team this year. Obviously, a lot surrounding the program. What can you say about how resilient you guys were and how proud you are to be a member of this team? Yeah, definitely. Obviously, um, there were some obstacles along the way throughout the year, so um, it was just good to see the way everyone stuck together and sort of played for each other. It gave effort all year, and I'm sure that showed on the scoreboard and also in the way that we played as well. It absolutely did, and we've been talking about this before. Wade is very excited to talk about this play. Your highlight of the season, my highlight of watching Maryland this year, the fake punting at Ohio State. Take me through it. I sort of rate myself with a bit of a thrower, so uh, I'm out there every day uh, just slinging the ball. Tavon Jacobs, like, I, I, there was a lot of traffic everywhere, so I, I couldn't really see him. Like, there was a lot of clutter. Threw the ball down at Tavon and he did the rest. So, yeah, it was, it was pretty exciting. I got up and about, was jumping around. Um, yeah, you could fair say that I was pretty excited. Let's go to some quick hitters now. First one, 
Uh, and this is going to be a tough one. Favorite Australian stereotype or one myth about Australians that, that you want to bust right now? Um, this is also back to my good friend Sean Christie, that the drop bear is not true. So I had to break that to him that it actually wasn't true. All right, Sean, if you're watching, we are glad you know that now. We want to ask you, any special or hidden talents you may have other than obviously on the football field? Um, I'm not a very good singer, so I can't say that. Um, we will try to get him to sing. We will update you if that comes out later. Not sure or not. Um, hidden talents, not really. Um, I honestly couldn't think of one that comes to mind. So he will stick to punting and maybe fake punts? Yeah, 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 that's right, that's right. So just call me the fake punt king. So. Fake punt king. All right, <laughs> new nickname for Wade Lees, and one last quick one for you. How far do you think I can punt? How far? Um, I'm giving you probably about 30 yards. It depends. From the line of scrimmage, where you're going, or from on the spot? From the spot where I punch. Oh, from where you say, oh yeah, easily 30 yards. Oh, I'm hoping 30 yards. Easily 30 yards. <laughs> uh, we will see right here. I will let you take over and sure. narrate. I'm going to punt now. We will see how this goes. All right, this is going to be interesting. He's got um, terrible kicks on at the moment. It looks like he's about to go out. So um, warming up the hands. It's pretty cold out here. No wind. Here we go. He might do a hamstring here. So here we go. Oh, that's not a bad. Oh, geez. He's actually turned that one over. That was better than mine. I've, I actually gave him that 30. So that was perfect technique here from, from the big fella. So I'm actually very proud. All right, I just want to say that was the best punt I've ever had. Uh, Wade, thank you for the coaching beforehand. We want to thank you for joining us on Between Two Turps. No worries. Thanks, boss. Appreciate it. I've got to say, I think the most impressive part of that whole story was Noah's punt. I mean, maybe he has a future on the team? Yeah, Noah had some leg on that. I know he hasn't had much success on the field otherwise, so that's why he sticks behind the camera. But he did a pretty good job there, and Wade Lee's had a great time, I think, hanging out with him. So Seemed like an awesome, <laughs> so awesome dude to hang out with, too. So yep. that's all we have for this episode of The Left Bench TV. You can follow us at The Left Bench on Facebook and at The Left Bench on Twitter. I'm Danielle Stein. And I'm Zach Solon. Have a great break, and see you after the break for another semester of The Left Bench TV.